everyone. So I'll be speaking to you today in a personal capacity uh, since I currently work in Congress. So I have to make that um, remark at the beginning. We'll be talking about my personal views today, but I really want to thank Sigma Xi and everyone involved in the award selection process for this incredible honor. Um, I'm deeply humbled to receive the Linda Mantel Award for contributions to the research enterprise. And as you can see, I don't have any slides today, which may be a refresher. Um, this award and my work has been really more abstract uh, since I've been away from the lab for a number of years. But um, I want to challenge you to think about the culture of science today and how you all contribute to it. And I also work on really high level questions around research, so I'll be uh, bringing up some of those today. And thank you to Jamie Vernon, who's been a really a fantastic collaborator over the years. Um, and it's great to be here uh, with all of you to celebrate the future of research in this country, and more importantly, to see the future in this room right in front of us. Um, but I want to speak particularly to the young scientists in the room today, and I'll um, come back to this point too. Personally, I wouldn't be here today without many of the mentors that I've had in research and policy, some of whom are here. Um, and they'd be watching online. Um, and they really challenged me to become better at every step during my career. So I wanna emphasize how important supervisors and also peer mentors and your peer mentors are to your, to your um, careers and your colleagues as well. So this award is not just for me, it's really for everyone who supported my efforts to push research forward and make it better throughout my career and also for future generations that I hope to inspire today as I'm saying a few words um, in the next few minutes. Um, I do want to mention also, I was really impressed by Linda Mantle's outreach. Uh, once I received the award and she that she uh, took the time to send remarks, clearly we need to encourage more women in scientific leadership. Um, so thank you to Linda for her impressive work in supporting research. Um, related to that, I was lucky enough to be mentored by a female faculty in the graduate schools as I was thinking through the remarks for today. Um, that really stuck with me in terms of the difference that female role models can make in research, both in my career and for all of you as well, hopefully. But um, I'm somebody who believes that passion can go a long way and that we should not be afraid to break new ground. And that's where innovation is. And all of you in this room are innovators in your own right. So don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something because someone else couldn't do it before you. Try it for yourself. You could be the first one to discover something unique and help solve some of the greatest problems and challenges of our time. So to the young generation here, the future is in your hands and I hope that you feel inspired and not intimidated by that idea. Now I wanna tell you a little bit about my career story. Um, so I'm an immigrant. I grew up in a family of scientists and have always understood the importance of scientific research to some extent, but never dreamed that I could actually influence it. My career progressed from the bench into publishing on academic topics, to advocating for research funding and good policy for future generations, and to supporting research through my current role in the US Congress. Each step along this journey was unanticipated and has seemed like an unattainable dream, and yet here I am now. I say this to inspire you to go after your dreams because you might just reach them and make sure you lift up others as you go, because we all need that, especially as we collectively work towards a cause greater than ourselves. And of course, one such, such cause um, that served in my career is to push the boundaries of what's possible in research. And my journey has been driven by the desire to make an impact on the future of science at each stage and I believe it's critical to diversify STEM and ensure that everyone can participate. Now, throughout my career, I found myself in spaces where I didn't feel I belonged. I was often the smallest person in the room, but I wanna remind you that you have a voice and not to let anything intimidate you because you deserve to be there. And I believe that one person can make a difference. So I wanna encourage you to find a cause that drives you and how you wanna impact the world. For me, it's always been about supporting the future of STEM, which means US leadership in research, both domestic and foreign born scientists, and maintaining international scientific collaborations with other nations, which as I said, is a, is a large question that we're trying to answer. It's not an easy balance to strike, uh, but I wanna emphasize that science is a global endeavor and we need to broaden participation and have a collective mindset. 
And when we think about the importance of research in our everyday lives, these broader impacts are something we need to emphasize to the scientific community, to the general public, and to our lawmakers, the idea that science impacts all of us, but also that we have the power to influence it. More broadly, thinking about research, I believe that we need to support scientific research in order to retain the best talent and enable the next generation to tackle some of the most important challenges of our time and also be able to anticipate new areas that we can't even imagine today, but which likely have already, solutions have potentially already been devised for, such as AI, quantum areas related to climate change, manufacturing, biotech, and so on. So how do we support research? Again, very broadly, of course, primarily through research funding, continued investments in basic and translational research. But in addition to funding, we need to ensure that we're mentoring young scientists and providing them with positive research environments where they can excel and that we continue to support diversity in our research enterprise. And that is still something that we are lacking in as a nation, but getting better. And these principles are fundamental to building a robust research ecosystem in itself, where the most promising talent can contribute significantly. And it is only with this having a robust research ecosystem foundation that we can move forward and think about how research advances our nation to maintain competitiveness. So if you heard Marsha McNutt's talk at the National Academies, if you haven't, you should watch it a few months ago. We are uh, on the way to no longer being leaders in science and are starting to lose valuable talent to other nations. Some of this is due to barriers in immigration or visa related issues preventing foreign born talent from being recruited and retrained in US universities or our national labs. And we also are not reaching scientific talent in certain parts of the country, uh, such as rural areas, low income, and particular types of institutions as well, like HBCUs and MSIs and so on. So this is an important problem to tackle in order to expand opportunities for research innovation across the country, which the federal government is working on and both Congress as well as the agencies. And the government can convene uh, multiple players that have important conversations, hopefully with tangible outcomes and metrics. So we'll talk a little bit about this in a few sessions today. Um, and many players um, can play a role here. So universities, national labs, scientific societies, think tanks, and other organizations that are invested in the research ecosystem to help advance US leadership and global scientific collaboration. And based on the speech by Marsha McNutt that requires a national research strategy that I would argue we should all think about and contribute to. And we need to strengthen partnerships between these various players so that we can move forward as a nation in a unified front. In addition to this collective endeavor, we also need to strengthen each sector individually through federal investments, infrastructure, and developing a highly skilled STEM workforce that can advance our economy. These collaborative efforts to drive research innovation across the nation and in our local communities will be critical for enacting legislative initiative put forth by Congress which is often where high such uh, this uh, high level ideas are born. And in the current political climate, and really regardless of your political beliefs, investing in research in all sense of the word um, and in a sustained fashion remains critical to our nation's innovation landscape. And that requires supporting and empowering a robust and diverse STEM workforce to help us tackle important global challenges. Um, so I mentioned women in STEM, foreign birth scientists, and all of those that traditionally have fewer opportunities. So I look forward to having additional conversations on this topic throughout the conference and also in future forums. And in closing, and to bring this back um, to the young people in the audience, we need you now more than ever. You're the future and our nation depends on you. So lean on your peers and mentors um, who can help and step forward with your best ideas and we look forward to seeing them. So I wanna dedicate this award to the next generation and to everyone in, in this room and who's watching, um, who continues to support the future of research in this country through education, policy, advocacy, enabling the United States to innovate and compete in science technology on a global scale. And that includes educators uh, that we often forget, um, but they're providing critical training to the future of STEM, including emerging scientific fields to build a highly skilled workforce. So thank you again for this award. Um, and I look forward to our continued work together to create a better society driven by research innovation and scientific evidence. So 
Thank you very much. <laughs>